Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the third of four Lunch and Loves, um, the Love Ambassador, excuse me, Love Ambassador edition. Um, I can't believe we're already on the third one. I feel like this month is flying by. I'm super thankful um, for those who have just really made time do just that. Like, I almost feel like it disappeared because it's been filled with so much love, so much laughter, so much goodness, um, a little WTF moments, you know, but we in this together. So I appreciate that. But the Lunch and Love, Love, Amb love Ambassador Edition uh, is a month long virtual series. It's presented by Love Now Media. Shout out to all the lovers out there. Um, we're, we've been doing this every Thursday from noon to 1 p.m. And really our focus has just been exploring the resistance of grind culture um, and living a soft life, right? Quote unquote, soft life with our incredibly dope 2023 love ambassadors. So in case you didn't know, here at Love Now Media, we are really on a mission to help create a more just, well, and equitable future um, by amplifying acts of love that are connected to social justice, wellness, and equity. So I am Sarita Martin, Director of Programs and Communications. And every week this month, I have had the honor and will continue to have the honor of being in conversation with y'all and our love ambassadors. So for those who may be a bit unfamiliar, um, what is a love ambassador? So our love ambassadors are people who lead, learn, and really lean into their respective communities with love. Um, these are folks who are using their influence and platforms for acts of love, right? That advocate for social justice, for that wellness and our equity. So this is just one of our ways, right? That we are attempting and hopefully they're able to receive that, that we're attempting to say, you know, we see you, we celebrate you and we're creating more space for your light to shine. That's what this is all about. And um, that's what you're doing by joining us today. So thank you for that. And I can really only hope that you all are encouraged to not just listen, but to contemplate what a softer life means and looks like for you. Because it is not a one size fits all, okay? I really wanna make that clear. Um, you define what a softer version of you looks like, what a softer version of you feels like. Um, and so I want you to spend some time seriously contemplating that and then join the conversation, okay? Folks have definitely been in the comments section um, when our conversations, our lunch and love conversations are happening, uh, letting, letting us know like how they feel about the quote unquote soft life um, who it applies to, who it doesn't, why, it, all of the things, right? All of the things. Um, so just know that your voice is valued. And yeah, we just want to, you know, drink our water, mind our wellness, like we've been doing. Um, this conversation is meant to hydrate and nourish you just as much as the lunch that you're hopefully enjoying will. So we're about to get started in doing so with a community agreement that this is a safe, respectful, and soft place for us all to land today. And so I ask that we taste our words before we feed them to each other and definitely thank you in advance for doing that. So today, our Lunch and Love guest is recording artist Delacroix and make sure you put the qua on it, okay? So Delacroix, welcome love. <laughs> Hey, my baby. Oh, I adore you. I adore you so, so much. And everyone at Love Now Media, y'all are just amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And all the other Love Ambassadors this year have been, definitely been inspired meeting, seeing new people and, and, and what they have going and the things that they're involved in and their particular disciplines has definitely opened my eyes to a few things myself. So I'm definitely enjoying all of this. Oh, that's beautiful. I, I, that warms my heart hearing that because you all really are just doing some dope things in, in each of your respective fields and industries. And um, to, to know that you all can be inspired by each other and like, oh, OK, that's happening in the city, too. Like, that's that's really dope. Um, so I'm curious to know, what do you love most about your life right now? Honestly, I think I love most about my life right now is my discipline and my boundary keeping. Ooh. 
because it takes love to do that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially when you got to keep your boundaries with people you love, your family, you know, people or people just around you because you're just like, even at work or, or your day-to-day basis boundaries, you know, um, I've been known to have a, a, a welcoming sphere, people say, you know, and I'm like, oh, that's beautiful, you know, but I'm like, oh my, you know, um, it's going to be a bit overwhelming. So now my boundaries are, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, you know, I have a list of it, you know, for each each particular person and things that, that's going on. So I think that's what I love most about it because it's opened me up to be able to balance my life out and all the things that I have going on. So I'm grateful for that. I am here for that. You grateful for it? I'm here for it. Okay, <laughs> I'm celebrating that for you because I don't think I don't think that a lot of folks always associate love with boundaries. Um, that is, you know, it's unconditional and it's ride or die. Is this and that? And it's like, ooh, but no, there are boundaries. So. For you, when did you start to realize that your love required some boundaries for self-love to be practiced? Mm -hmm. This has been, I I think I started seeking, I'd say even therapy back in 2015, 2014, probably about like 2014, 2015. And, you know, I realized that when I'm packing so many things that a lot of people we have to learn what love really, really, really is. And I said, I want to try to learn that. So love also means that I'm human. I I can't make it everywhere. I also can't hold people accountable for things that I won't even hold myself accountable for. You know, like people want to show up places and it's just like, well, if I can't show up, I can't be mad that they can't show up. But I also have to understand that if they show up in another route, however way they show up, they showed up. You know, some people, they call it a love language. You know, I choose to just say it's how they were able to show up, you know, and because that, because love is something that you can't, how do I say that? Because when it's unconditional, you really, it's hard to control it. You learn to respect and love and understand that your boundary, maybe I'm not going to fuck them out. Because that's going to be a bunch of mess. And then in the end, I'm going to feel bad. Then now I got to take them on this whole roller coaster of stuff when I could have made that first choice to love from the from the boundary and love it that way. So that way the love is still pure and strong with wherever it is. You know, you know what I mean? Because we're all human. We we're like a pie. We only have but so much. You know, none of us, we're not when once we get to that next round, we may be able to filter in the other areas. But right now we're in this physical round. So we have to operate as such, you know? So don't know why I said all that, but you know. No, no because I think it like that that gives some context to how you arrived at the the realization that love there are love does have boundaries like there there can be boundaries within love especially as we are looking or intending um, to practice self love mm-hmm. because before it's love going out to all is like all right but how are you loving yourself. How, mm-hmm. What does that practice look like? So no, I, I 100% appreciate what you just shared. Um, so for folks who, who may just be meeting you today for the first time, um, tell us a little bit about who you are and how love influences Delacroix's work. Yeah. So, you, know. <laughs> you know, I, I'm grateful to, to be able to work and that people even want to ever work with me. You know, it's always an honor when people say that because, you know, this world we live in, y'all, is crazy, especially for someone like me, you know, but I feel like all of us have our level of crazy and things that we have to deal with that because we're all part of marginalized communities, you know, Um, so that can um, definitely be an impact, but I'm just, I'm someone who, I'm a singer first, music is my heart, entertainment is my heart, I love making people smile, you know, letting them, making them feel good at, you know, touching that, that inner part of them that lets them know that 
No matter what's going on around there, this is the moment that you can live in that's free, that's safe, that's peaceful, that brings you joy. You can dance. You can just be free and be yourself um, in your fullness. And I feel like when we're truly ourselves, that's when we're our most happy. So that's when we're able to exude love the most, you know, is when we gather together like that. So, yeah, music and entertainment has definitely been my um, outlet for that. You know, um, because it's it's just like I said, the, the way most artists inspire me, you know, when I go to certain concerts and events, it's a safe place. And I say, wow, you know, that's how I, I want to continue to make people feel. Um, because sometimes and a lot of people, like I said, we all have love languages. Mine is my is my art, you know, and it helps inspire my life, you know, the things I've been through as a, a black trans woman, you know what I mean? And having to come up and go through the life of the, the Christian world and, and coming up in that and um, just having the, the seeing the different decades and the rise of social media, the rise of internet, all these things into where we are today. Um, I feel like, yeah, that, that's how I'm able to, that's why I'm able to express my art the way that I am and help contribute to the act of love and the, the thing I think is the most powerful thing in the world is love. So, you know, that's just love in every form of it. Yeah. So how do you define grind culture, especially being an artist, um, being a Black trans woman artist, like all of your, your wholeness, your fullness of self, how do you define grind culture? What does that look like um, mm -hmm. in your life? Yeah, just give some context to, for for those who are um, especially because I think like with artists, well, artistry in general with music, you know, I mean, like we have an idea of grind, what the grind might look like, but what does that look like for you, and and how do you define it? It's so funny because when I when when you when I when we were talking about this and the different conversations you guys have been having. I true my my um partner and I, my boyfriend and I were talking about it the other day. And I was just like, you know, as an artist, you know, we sometimes will get caught up in, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I wanna be this, I wanna be this, I gotta go, 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 go. And I I've learned that you can do that. Do it, pick your pick. Your, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but you need balance. You know, like with everything I have coming up with now, I have a lot planned, um, but I'm not going to turn around and grind out and tire myself out because then the love that I'm trying to exude, the energy that I'm really trying to exude through the project won't fully come through because you have all this blockage because all the grind brings all that. When you grind, it's like grunting. You know what grind is? It's that, that grind against the pieces are falling off when things are grinding. OK, so if you don't if you aren't careful with that grind, a lot of the, some of the pieces that you need might be a little thin because you're going to deal with some people and some things in this life that they go come at you left and right. and You have to be able to deal with it. So if you grind it too much, you ain't got enough to to give because it's taken away from it. Yeah. Y'all give me a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Because that the specifically that part that you mentioned about pieces of yourself falling away in the grind, being lost in the grind, like that is real. And as it's happening, you may not even realize it. Like you, you because you're, you're moving so fast or it's one thing to the next, there's no soft landing happening anywhere where you can catch your breath. It's just go, 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 go. You don't. I, I, I can speak for myself. I did not necessarily recognize the pieces of me that the grind was chipping away at slowly and, but surely. Um, and so just curious to know, like for you, when you think back to moments where you were in the thick of your grind, um, what, what pieces fell away that maybe required some real intention, intentional work for you to recover or, or did, was it like that fell away and I can't get that back, but I know better now, whatever that may have been like for you, but like what was a piece or some pieces of you that fell away in the grind that, um, that you came to realize? 
everything you just said, it all encompassed into all those different emotions I felt. I felt like I lost, I've lost friends along the way, loved ones, relationships with some people, because as I was grinding so focused on being Delacroix, you know, I may not have won Grammys or been all over, but I was, you know, at one point, there was a point where I was doing quite a lot. You know, I was at almost every pride I could think of all up and down the East Coast, over to the West Coast, just performing for crowds of thousands and thousands. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. You know what I mean? Something I always dreamed of. But in order to do that, I had to grind so hard because we had, you, you have limited resources sometimes. Mm -hmm. And when you're trying to take care of it yourself, you know, because we hear how the industry can do you. And a lot of times, a lot of us want to be in control ourselves. So when you're trying to be in control of yourself, you you have to do it all on your own, which means, you know, there's levels to it. Meek Mill said it, there's levels to this, you know, and there really, really is. And so um, I, I knew that I was starting to lose a lot of tolerance and patience. Mm -hmm. And patience is of a virtue. It really is. And I truly feel like that if you have patience in a lot of areas and you make there's there's choices in life. Okay, let me say that there's choices. And I say this to people, people laugh, but I'm dead serious about this. Two people had a choice. I learned about choices at Oscars 2022. Okay. Got Will Smith, Chris Rock. They both had a choice. We can be mad at whoever, whichever, which way they go. But at the end of the day, they both had a choice. And if certain choices was made, a lot of things wouldn't happen. One second, one second. But when you are dealing with so much pressure from the world all the time, because you're grinding and you're not taking that time for self and understanding that I can give you what I can give you, you lose those parts of you. So we may make decisions that now we have to come back and say, you know, yeah, I stand by it because I was right and justified in it. But should I have done that? Did I really want to do that? You know, you don't ever you don't ever want to have to do that. But it doesn't make you wrong either because you can make a decision out of so like for me, I, I'll bring it back to what we were saying earlier. I have situations where people I don't we don't have the same relationships that we've had in the past, you know, because we've all had to make decisions and choices. But one certain choice could have changed it either way, but we didn't because at the moment, those were the choices that we had made. So you can never go back and fix that. But what you learn is that, let me take time and understand that time is not on my side. Let me let time be time. I'm going to take time for me in this moment now when I know I need it. So that way, when those moments come up on me, I have what I need to make the, the best choice to get A, B, C, D, and E, or whatever that is that you need to get done, or to control whatever that is that you need to control. You, you've given a little uh, life lesson, life skills <laughs> lesson <laughs> up here for, for us. Um, because they're, oh my gosh, the layers with the grind culture. And especially even starting to recognize um, what you look like in grind mode and what you lose potentially, like when you're in grind mode, like you said, I didn't have patience or tolerance. Like that was a sign that it was that it was really starting to affect you. And what do you what do you do in that moment? Like once you realize, like I'm really actually less tolerant. Um, I'm actually really like I don't I don't have the patience. I don't have these things that maybe were once important to you, or at least maybe was a characteristic that you had. Um, once you realize what the grind is costing you, for you, what did that? What choice did you have to make then? And what did that look like for you? I can say that was when I finally made the decision to transition actually fully mm -hmm. because I realized that, okay, I have some things in me still that I'm denying and I'm allowing influences of the past and of the present dictate some things that is really causing me much more pain and I know it's causing me pain, you know? So, um, and because I was dealing with that pain, I was unable to suppress it anymore because I was so focused on just working and working and working. So I didn't take the time to address it. 
So as therapy happened and I began to address and dig deep in myself, I found who I was. And so, okay, this is what I need to do. So I took the break from music and, and a lot of entertainment and stuff like that. Even though I said, I'm almost there. I almost have a record deal. I almost can be big and, you know, all of that. But I had to realize to myself, like, mm -mm, you can do that. But if you don't focus on you, it can, it can make things a lot more difficult. Yeah, because I mean, have you have you ever thought about that? That if what would your life and your dreams look like or feel like had you not made the transition, had you not tapped into to your true authentic self? Um, have you have you ever had those moments where like you're like, hmm, what what would that have looked like, and how would I have felt? I had the moments before I did it because I had to live a life that wasn't really authentic to who I was. So I thought that every day. Yeah. And I don't look back any way, shape, or form. I don't think about where it would be because I'm like, I now I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. I feel like every decision, every everything that's happening now is in line with the universe. Had you especially even now, how do you define soft life now? Like, what does that look like for you? What does that feel like for you? Um, do you feel that you are experiencing a softer version of yourself? Totally, totally. And the more you guys have talked about it, the more I understand it. And I said, wow, I really have, because I, when I tell you I be in my house peaceful, People be thinking that I, at this point in time, I do. People be having their events and they be upset because I can't make everything. But baby, I love, <laughs> it. I love you. I tell you, I love you, but I can't be everywhere just like you can't be everywhere. You know, I had events and I was looking up like, where are the people at? You know, things that I had years ago, you know? And so I look at it like, I have to do what I have to do because I understand there is the moments that when your body is, your body will tell you. And a lot of times we push past our body, letting us know that we're tired. Mm -hmm. And that's once that's happened, the mental part doesn't always catch up with you right away. That's why we deal with the different things that we deal with because the, that mental part doesn't always catch up with the physical right away. We think they do, but no, those are two technically different realms you know your physical can be heart right you can have pain in your foot but keep going or you can have something that don't work but keep going you know what i mean but you got to constantly think in your mind about overpowering it so once that 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 has maybe been healed or fixed the trauma the the thoughts and the dealing with the mental part of it hasn't hasn't full hasn't healed yet because it's just now finally getting to the next phase of okay now that's done let's focus on what's next Mm. Do you, based on how the trajectory of your journey has unfolded, do you see a difference in the expectations that people have of you, especially like when it comes to grinding as an artist, um, a difference in the expectations that they have of you now that you are number one, living your most authentic life in this most authentic version of you um, and also this softer version of you? Um, that's a good question. I feel as people, people who truly, truly love you, understand you and they'll get it and they'll make the, they'll do what they need to do and they'll, they'll support you. They'll support you fully in it, you know? And I, I have so much support from the ones I need the support from. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for it because I, they know I've made the choices to better myself. That's what matters. That's totally what matters. Mm -hmm. So what ways are you, because I know you mentioned earlier, um, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm i not making it to everybody's event. I'm not, you know, if I need to rest, I need to rest. 
Uh, but are there any other ways that you are just intentionally and actively working to, to live a softer life? You know, meditation, mm-hmm. you have to have a strong spiritual, a strong spiritual um, basis, foundation. I don't tell people what spiritual practices to do. I do believe that many options are there and many things do work. Um, so I, I I tell people, for me, it's I still love gospel music. That is a thing for me. Um, time with God is true and strong for me. Um, and that's the times I'm in my personal space. Nobody's around but me and spirit. And I'm doing what I do with spirit. And that's it. That's what you need. You need that. What's your favorite gospel song? Ah, favorite. Go- what is my go-to? Oh, that's a that's a hard question. <laughs> I listen because my first my one of my albums was gospel. I was raised on gospel, but one of the first things that come to mind is a song from Marette Brown Clark, and it's called um, "Well, we all know I just want to praise you." Um, but I also have um, "My Heart Has Been Restored." That's one of my favorite gospel songs from Marette Brown Clark. It talks about the restoration of going through those times when you are down, because we do have it. We can't, you know, it, that's, it's inevitable. It's going to happen because we're human. It's part of balance, part of the life. But um, that's my favorite gospel song, for sure. I just saw, um, I think, a trailer, because are you in a, a film or something that's coming up? I am actually, I am the Truth Be Told film. Um, so that that is with, with, with my girl Nika. She's amazing. We actually filmed that back in 2018. Oh, um, so that was some time. Yeah, it was definitely before um, my transition and everything, you know. So that that was a that was a great time. I learned a lot there. I learned a lot there with a lot of different people. And so the film is called Truth Be Told. What can you just tell us a little bit of like what is that about? Because I was watching, I was like, wait a minute. I know quite a few folks in this film. Like, wait, wait this is I, I'm gonna have to check this out. I was like so excited to see so many of y'all. Um, I think I saw Joey Cathos. Um, uh, oh gosh, my mind is is kind of going a few different directions, but. Um, but yeah, just tell us a little bit about the film and like, how, how can we support? Cause you, you win it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm coming through clear, right? Just make sure we good. You get me, you got me, you got me. All right. Yeah, I can hear you good. Good, 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 good. But, um, so I, I know I was part of, part of it. It she, they were working, they've been working on this for a long time. I do know that it, um, is about the LGBT community's relationship with the church and the Black church specifically. Um, because, you know, a lot of us were raised in the Christian background, you know, the apostolic, Pentecostal, Baptist, you know, really we're all believing the same thing, but kind of not believing the same thing. Yeah. But yeah, so <laughs> you know what I mean? So I I I I it's it's definitely about the um the relationship over the years and up until now and a lot of people how they've dealt with the trauma because that's where most of our trauma has come from. I know for me a lot of my trauma comes from those beliefs. Mm. So how has uh I guess the evolution of yourself led to the evolution of your faith or maybe it's vice versa i'm not sure but how has the evolution of one influenced the evolution of the other of the other self and faith it's still centered around god because you know we say we know god never changes right Mm -hmm. so if the creator never changed clearly only humans change so of course they'll tell you anything So if I'm still breathing something, the only thing you can do is take that away from me by doing a terrible act. Then you really don't have much more power over me than anything that's beyond me. 
There's things that are beyond us. We don't have all the answers. I don't need all the answers really because I'm living in the physical right now. I don't want to be caught between two realms. I'm living in the physical. So I've learned that the creator knows what's best. The creator is the beginning and the end. That's where my trust is. And when I have those, every time I need to go and just maybe listen to gospel music or listen to a Destiny Child or Beyonce record, you know, seriously, like, it's funny. People think that, you know, that, oh, hey, oh, you worship her. No, it's called inspiration. That's energy. Mm. What, what are we, why are we so scared of energy? You know, be mindful of the energy that you, re, that you receive. Growing up in church, you received the energy that you weren't good enough. You always told you weren't good enough. Oh, I'm a filthy rag. I'm this. I'm nothing without this. And I get that concept. But you also have to be mindful of the words that you're putting on yourself. You turn around and tell yourself that words are powerful, but then we turn around and say we're filthy rags. I know one of the things I've really appreciated getting to see, just even from like follow you, following you on socials, is um, the, the love that you constantly give to others and the awareness that you practice, um, at least, you know, as far as social media goes, like on a daily basis, um, as often as we see you posting and stuff, but the awareness that you practice um, when it comes to not just like the suffering of others, um, but the joy the joy of others, of life. Um, I, I have kind of like consistently just, just been in awe and appreciation of that. And also getting to see you share your joy. And I guess in, in some ways it's, it's a reclaiming of joy, just you know, even thinking about some of what you just spoke to. Um, it's a reclaiming of, of your joy and of your value and of your sense of self-worth. Um, and I feel like one of the times, or well, I know one of the times where I saw you very joyous um, was when you went to a, the, the Beyonce concert. If I'm not mistaken, you was there. Um, what did that moment mean for you? What, especially in terms of inspiration, because it just, it was clear you got your whole life. Of course I did. Um, yeah, it's, it definitely um, is an inspiration for me because Beyonce has been, I've watched her as an artist, right? Since Destiny's Child. I was a 15 year old kid, um, 14, you know, 13. Those, when I was young, listening to Destiny's Child from first album to the Rise of Noir, but I always tell people that at 15, when you don't want to be on this earth anymore, you know, that was the first time that started dealing with a lot of the depression and uh, the um, SI and things like that that I was dealing with. You know, a lot of times really wanting to just get rid of self. That was one of the many times and, that, and then Survivor came out, you know, and I was already loving Destiny Shout and I'm seeing them and I'm, I understood that from whatever the narrative they were pushing, because people say it was a narrative that was pushed with the member changes and all of that, you know, but at the same time, I was one who was watching all the behind the scenes stuff. So I was seeing the interviews where they were crying, where Beyonce and they were talking about, yo, this is really hard for me. I have to get in front of the camera and I just lost these people that have been, these girls have been my friends forever. And I had knew how that felt because I always wanted to be in a group and I had lost people along the way. Like, dang, I can never get nowhere. You know what I'm saying? But I always felt it, the feeling of abandonment, I guess, too, that she talked about, she felt, you know, in those moments, I could, I, I just felt like I related to her, you know, and ever since then, it just gives me that feeling. But my most, the thing that gets me the most though, is the song Cozy she did. She has T.S. Madison on it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if a lot of people understand with the lyrics, but she talked about scars that she has from the twins. Mm -hmm. And she said she was relating it to the scars of trans women and things like that, saying, you know, that we're all women here together. And she sees it as a woman, as she's as she is a woman. And that just that, that right there, that connection, I was like, oh, only a real fan will get that. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it really made me, it really made me feel really good about that. That that moment after all these years of being bashed, oh, she the one to make you act like this. She the one that did it, did it out. Well, here, yep, she is. Here's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if that's what you say, yeah, then let's just go with that narrative, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I guess it's does it feel timely at all for you like that song coming you seeing her in concert you being in the space that you're at in your life and your artistry does that is, does there feel like some sense of, of divine timing and if so um, what is that like for you it does exactly what it feels like and that's why I adore you too because you get that and you you understand that some people don't understand that, okay. Mm-hmm. But for me now, it's been it's definitely been a true inspiration. It's definitely been a go point for me, and definitely been a go a, a motivator and a a pusher to no matter what, just keep it going, keep it flowing. Keep it going, keep it flowing, okay. Because also tomorrow, you are dropping new music. <laughs> <laughs> So yes. it's flowing. It's flowing. <laughs> it, is. it is. But it's funny because actually the date was already set before we even spoke. Mm-hmm. It was already set, actually. Yeah. And I said, okay, this already, it's just kind of how everything, it wasn't, in, it, I do things with intention, but this literally just kind of been happening. Like the things that I do with intention are is my art. So when you hear the songs, when you listen to the music and you see the way things were released and things like that, that was intentional. But when it comes to perform a lot of performances or interview or things like that or discuss things, I really rely on the universe and whatever spirit brings and leads to me. And I'm led to because if that that's true authenticity there. Mm-hmm. And that's where you get your best work and art out of. Because my my whole goal in my life is to live life with a purpose. So I live my I live a purposeful life. Purposeful why, is that, life. why is that important to you? Because we all have a purpose and love is centered mm-hmm. in that too. You we're all here to truly make each other better and ourselves better. That, that's one of the big things we're here to do. And we all have some type of purpose because of everything that's going on in this world. There's good, there's the evil. And they're both they're neck and neck, unfortunately. That's duality, you know. And I feel as though as if we focus on purpose, each of us have our gifts to deliver. And that's why you're here today doing what you do. And I'm thankful for it. (laughs) Like this is one of, just one of the reasons why I really am thankful that I like, yes, get to do what I do. um, But, and it's crazy because I was just journaling (laughs) Journaling, journaling last night, and I'm just kind of reflecting on my own journey and the struggles. The you know, especially being a teen mom, um, the different things that I've encountered and overcome in my life, from sexual assault and you know, experiencing poverty, and like all these these different layers of the things, all the things, and. While I was listening to it, I also had like a sermon plan in the background. And it just so happened that as I was writing, um, you know, I'm thankful for what for what and who my struggle made me. Like it was hard <laughs> going through it. But when I think about who I am today and when I think about the fullness of myself that I bring to everything that I do and the intentionality um, that drives all of it, like, I'm thankful. I don't know that I would have been able to be who I am had I not experienced what I did. Um, and as I was saying that, uh, the, the sermon that was playing in the background it, it hit that part. Um, it was good that I was afflicted. And it just, it, I was like, oh, okay, I see. <laughs> I guess that's a version of what I'm writing. Um, but yeah, it was just like, I'm, I, yes, I'm thankful for what I do, but I'm thankful for who I am. Yeah. Because that is what influences and shapes everything. And who I am has been so greatly shaped 
by what I experienced and what I chose to take away from those things that no, I don't believe happened to me. They happened for me, yeah. especially if this is this is who I am today. And this is a much softer version <laughs> of myself that I get to experience. And I wasn't sure that I would, you know, in, in some ways get to experience this version of myself. And that feels very special um, to do. And it's something that, you know, as we were speaking to, or as you spoke to earlier, like boundaries, it's, I'm a little, I'm a lot more adamant about the boundaries because I like this version of myself. <laughs> I like the softer version of myself. And um, she, I, I want her to stick around a little bit and I, 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 I can't get ran ragged. <laughs> can't get, okay. Can't get ran ragged. So for you, like, how has leaning into a softer version of yourself um, impacted the way that, you know, that, that you show up for specifically for your community and in your work? Like, how has it impacted those two areas, the way you show up for maybe others and the way that you, you bring your, yourself to your work? Um, I'm able to assert myself in the right places. Like uh, I'm going on my second year actually being um, on a committee board with the D DVFL for grant, grant writing for LGBT nonprofits. I did it last year and I'm able to attend the meetings and I have all that time. So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, it's a meeting. Okay, I took some time to myself. I don't mind being around a lot of people, you know, because mm -hmm. we all got those. I mean, I'm just being honest. So I'm able to assert myself in the right areas to do my philanthropy work. You know, it's not something I announce all the time. You're not going to see me post every day about me doing that because I don't feel like that's necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, philanthropy work is you do that because that's what you do because you, that's what your heart desires. I don't need, I don't want that posted all over the place, you know, case in point, Beyonce, she does her Be Good Foundation, but that's only a portion of the many of things that they, she does. She just doesn't announce it because it's not, there's no need to announce it. The, the, the impact is, is made on the people that you help and that you're working with. Yeah. So I'm able to assert myself a lot more in my more philanthropy work that I have that I'm doing. What, um, for you is, like if you could witness your love change anything, any any aspect of the world or of humanity, what would you like to see your love change? Everything negative. Yeah, that's a tall order. <laughs> I, I was waiting for you to ask that question too. I thought I, I said, oh, I love it. I said, because I'm telling people, if I, and you said, what's the one thing? Okay, it's tall, but you said one. I bottled it up in one because I make sure I let negativity know. You have no power over any of us, any way, shape, or form. And negativity is all things, baby. That's not just one thing. That's the, you didn't get somewhere on time. You're running late. That's the, oh, I can't find this. That's the, man, I'm hungry, but I don't know what I want. Ugh, why can I never make up my decision? Mm. It seems small, but really... It's all parts of you as of emotional of emotions that deal and that contribute to negative thoughts of, or negative things that come to you because it's so cunning. You know, people call it the devil, but really it's just uh, to me, it's, it's it, it can be that if that's what you want to call it, you know, but it's so cunning with how it works because the littlest thing can make us happy. The littlest thing can also make us sad. So we got to be mindful. You know, and just that's that's why I say anything negative. If my love can overpower that. I want it to. I love it. I love it. What do you love most about the community that you serve right now? The safety and freedom and liberation. It feels good to be liberated and to just know that. Listen, yeah. honey, be yourself. Okay. <laughs> Everybody else is already taken. So right. And nobody can be you but you. Yeah. Like <laughs> nobody can be Delacroix. At all, honey. One of what what we all say. I'm one of one. I'm the only one. <laughs> right. Like, you know, and it sounds like it's oh, that's too cocky. Da -da -da. No, it's not cocky, confident. Just yeah, yeah get fix that. It's confident. 
Because see, people love you to go around and talk about you, hey, I ain't this, I'm this, and I'm oh, so down on myself. People love you to be woe is me and then talk about you because you woe is me. But when mm-hmm. you up there, they'll talk about you. They're going to talk about you regardless. Honey, I can tell you, I can tell you that this cup, this is a cup. No, it's not. That's a bowl. No, it's not. It's a cup. It, it'll keep going. And the, and the world spins on. And the world spins on. Um, so from where you sit, though, like what, what does the community that you love stand to gain? What could they gain by potentially embracing or exploring a softer life, a softer version of of themselves? Peace. Mm. True peace. You'll have peace. You will have peace when you still live a softer life because you make room for peace. And when you make room for peace, peace loves that you made room for it. Because it's like, oh, I'm here. I get to give you all this peace and joy and love and all that with it. Yeah. I was just thinking about the title of your your uh, single that's about to drop tomorrow, <clears throat> July 21st. <laughs> new, <laughs> new song from Delacroix dropping. Uh, new Me, I believe it's called. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, that, as soon as I saw the title, I was like, yes, number one. Um, but two, also like, hmm, new me. What's that? What's that about? What? It, what is this? What she? What? What's this about to say? What is she making clear? Making you known? Um, what is that? What is, what is new me about? And especially for that to be your first single, it sounds like off of a new project. Um, tell us a little bit about it. So it, it it actually is about living a softer life in hindsight because it's about understanding where you're at now. Um, knowing what's going on, where you are at in this moment. And it's now time to make room for you, which requires the softer life because you're living, when you make room for you, you're pleasing yourself. So the life should be easier when you're giving self gratification, you know, self, self love, self, self, self awareness, all in the, all in the positive, you know? And so that's what new me is about. It's the first string of a lot of new music that's coming from me and a lot of um a lot of things I'm looking forward to specifically when it comes to music. But it's the first of, of an amazing project that I've been working on since before the pandemic, to be real with you. Wow. So, yeah, I've been working on this project for a minute. Some songs have been recorded for a while. I went back and revamped some songs that I thought I was gonna use and didn't get to use and played around with. And so I'm excited about um everything I have. It's multiple parts to this. You know, there is multiple. I can't, I don't want to say acts because they're going to say, oh, you're doing what Beyonce did, act one. You're darn right. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's telling you how to keep an album flowing for multiple years. She'll just put out some mess music and she don't fade away. No, 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 no. I want my music to come out. I want all of y'all to enjoy it and eat it up and soak it up and understand who I am from the music, you know? And that's just the reality of it. And you let it be known for the record, yes. <laughs> for the record, uh, where did "New Me" come from? Like, what's what what inspired that, um, and why now? So we were in the studio last year. My boy, I'm Nick Kwan Wan, yeah, he's an artist, yeah, an amazing young man. That's like my little brother. He's real cool. Um, he just had an album come out last year, last week too. So go get to check him out. Check him out. But um, he was in the studio. He said, I got this song. I don't know if you want to try. I said, what you mean? He was like, this beat is hot. What you want to talk about? I said, it's a whole new me right now. I don't got time for that. He's like, you know what? He just started, because we have my songwriter. Like, I have songwriters that I work with. I don't just write by myself. I work with people. And we have a relationship with these people, meaning we're friends, where we actually have conversation about life and things going on. And... um. Every time I get a chance to catch up with them, you know, where we talk about just things that have to happen in my life, you know, throughout the last few years from transitioning, from the way the world has changed through COVID and the pandemic, just so many things that have happened. And I, you know, losing friends, losing people, um, people passing on, you know, I just lost, I've lost quite a few people in the last couple of weeks, you know, so it's been very definitely a, a road but i understand at the same time that all of this is part of 
the world, part of life and part of this realm that we're in. So I realized it's a new me. I realized that. I realized it totally that I can't do things the way I used to do them where I'm doing it this way. This is where we're going. So it's talking about this is where we're going. Everything back then is back then. This is where we're going. This is how I felt, but this is where we're going. Hmm. I just have to say, I'm really excited to listen because even what you just shared feels very timely. Like when I tell you, I literally can't make this up. Um, I literally just said this this morning um, in a conversation I was having connected to a really bad accident I was in some, uh, what, maybe like 18 months ago. Um, and the person asked, like, how have I been doing? And uh, I, I just shared that, like, I, one of the major things I have come to realize is that I can't do things the way I used to do them before. Like, it's just not even healthy for me to try to contort myself or to force the way that I used to do things like that version of myself into this version of myself. It's not, that's not it. It is a new me. I do have to approach things differently and think things through in a different way. And that's okay. Like that's, that's the reality of it. And I'm, I'm grounded in who I am in it. And, and so, yeah, like this, even talking to you in this moment is like, it is a new me actually. And, and now we ain't going back. <laughs> it's not, we have evolved and this is where we're at and this is where life is. And there's a whole lot of beauty and a whole lot of love here. Clearly just even having this conversation, it's just love, pure love. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'm so excited. Thank you for sharing. I'm thanking you in advance for sharing with me with I think um, so many of us who that I think that that's the season that a lot of us are in especially coming out of the pandemic is like who I was before the pandemic is that 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 one ain't here no more that version not gonna work in this new life that's just real um so I know we're getting close on time uh what is it that you hope for your future self what do you hope for your future self and for your community? I think I want the same thing for us all, which is to understand living a softer life and being happy, truly happy in this timeline that you're in now. You deserve it, no matter who you are, where you're at, and whatever that is, there's a lot that feeds happiness. Um, just I hope everyone is able to find what feeds them that and they eat up. Get what feeds you your happiness and your joy, and I want you to eat it up, okay? <laughs> okay, eat, eat up, eat up, because <laughs> once you do, then they're gonna be like, She ate, <laughs> okay? Exactly, and you saw where I was going with it, exactly, 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 <laughs> exactly. Um, all right, so I know we gotta wrap last but not least. Uh, what do you want most for your life right now in this moment where you're at? What do you want most for your life? Most for my life. Like I said, all peace, happiness, joy. I want us to continue to I want to continue to live a purpose driven life. I want to keep fulfilling my purpose. The long, as long as I live and I walk on this planet, I want to keep fulfilling my purpose in every aspect of it and touch as many lives as I can. Okay. I know that's right. All right. So look, let folks know um, where, where we can follow you at, where we can find the new music that's dropping tomorrow. It's called New Me. Um, all of that. How, how can we make sure that we stay tapped in um, to Delacroix's flow, honey, that she got going on? Because it's quite a bit. Y'all heard her like kind of mention there's more coming. So yeah, clearly we got to stay tuned. But yeah, yeah. let us follow and find you. <laughs> just look me up um delacroix d-e-l-e-q-u-a um i am delacroix is most of my um my instagram and all those good little social media markets um yeah so just just find me there all my music will be available everywhere so if you apple spotify wherever you listen to stream music it will be available all over the place and stay tuned like on youtube and things like that you never know something may just pop up Tomorrow, maybe some, maybe a video. I don't know. Just might. Just 
Yes. And I, I I definitely have to take a moment to shout out new new voices for reproductive justice. Um, because that is actually where I first even came to know of a Delacroix. Um, we had, there was a march, I think, that they did. I, I remember it was the Say Her Name March. Say Her Name March, yes. And I don't even know, I want to, how many years ago? Y'all, pandemic brain, please forgive me. But they did a Say Her Name March here in Philly. And Delacroix performed at the march. And I just remember seeing, oh my gosh, the young people's faces, specifically young women, just lighting up, so excited, it, like just giddy as ever, um, rushing once she was done off stage, like over to meet her, to just like hug her and love on her. And she just loved them right back. I mean, just arms around them all. It was just so beautiful. And I was like, wow, who, who is she? Like to see that kind of impact on our young people and they just, they glowed. It was beautiful. They just had this glow to them. And I, I just kind of, you know, we got to chat then. It wasn't anything too deep, but, you know, definitely got to connect. And I just kept, kept you in the back of my mind of like, how, if I ever, you know, can find a way to like help th that light that I saw shine, like sis got it. Um, and so, you know, just so happened with being in this position of Love Now Media and knowing our mission and what we're doing with Love Ambassadors. And I was like, mm -mm, we need a, we need, this is Delacroix. This is like, this is who she is. This is what she does. Um, and you said yes uh, to being a love ambassador. And so I, I want to truly thank you for allowing us to love on you in this way, for, for your heart being open to receive love, um, because it, it really is pure. And um, I know I can personally just say thank you for, for how you're not only using your artistry to love on others, but um, for how you're using your life as a vessel to love on others. It is truly beautiful to witness. So just want to make sure I, I share that with you and shout out New Voices for Reproductive Justice because that was how I came to know you. And I'm so thankful I did. So yeah. Um, I adore you. I it was that was a time. That was a time. I think you could see it's on I have this on Instagram still. I remember that day. It's it's happened that 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 makes my heart smile. I thank you so much. Yeah. No. All right y'all so Delacroix, you have just met. Uh, she is one of our love ambassadors. We have four, right? Four love ambassadors. Um, and we have been doing these lunch and love, love, uh, excuse me, love ambassador edition conversations every Thursday in July, um, noon to 1 p.m. We've chatted with Marquise Richards. We chatted with Soraya Nicole today. Um, you just got to be a part of the conversation with Delacroix. And then we are closing it out with Tiffany Tever, uh, excuse me, Tiffany Tavares of Wells Fargo. Um, that is happening next Thursday at noon. Okay, noon to 1 p.m. So please make sure you set your reminder Thursday, July 27th at noon. That is our final lunch and love. If you go to lovenowmedia.com, you'll see the flyers, you'll see the replays, all of that stuff. Um, and you can RSVP. We have a free option. Um, but if you want to support the work, if you want to support the mission, the vision, all of that good stuff, uh, you can also do so um, by buying a, a ticket, right? Um, and that supports our work. So thank you all to everyone who has been helping to share the word about our Lunch of Loves and making sure folks know about it and showing love on social media. And thank you to each and every one of our love ambassadors who um, have not only allowed us to love on them, but have brought their wealth of just wisdom and knowledge and love and goodness to these conversations, these lunch days honey because I leave here full when we wrap up I truly have like had a meal worth of things to think about good food for thought so um, with that we are officially wrapped and we will see you next week peace